In this program, what we're going to do is we're going to perform a binary search uh, of an array. Uh, so the program is called binary search. Uh, so we're going to search for an element using the binary search algorithm. Now, hopefully you have completed the linear search uh, program. Uh, if not, you should complete that first. Uh, the beginning of this program is identical. So everything that I've got highlighted here is all just taken directly from the linear search program. Um, so whatever you want to do, if you want to uh, recopy this or just copy paste, it's totally fine. So what we've got is we've got our uh, integer array. We've got our value we're searching for. We've got a counter that's going to keep track of how many how many attempts it's going to take to find our value or not find our value. Uh, we've got a new num, which is important for this part where we're loading into the array. So each element of the array is one or two larger than the previous, uh, just to put some randomness into it. So uh, say like the first value gets set at randomly at one, the next one could be two or three, and it'll just keep going for all 100 elements. And then we've got this random number formula, which is the highest number in the array minus the lowest number plus one, which is the range value plus the lowest value in the array, and that's what we're going to search for. Okay, so this one's a little bit different, and looking at the program might not immediately make it obvious what is happening. Okay, here's how a binary search works. Uh, we're going to start in the middle of the array. So in this one, imagine we've got 11, uh, so that's a length of 12. Uh, so we're gonna divide that by two and we're gonna get six. So this one, instead of starting at the beginning, is going to start at six. Uh, so let's imagine we are looking for the number, uh, the number 22. So what it's going to do is it's going to realize, okay, 14 is smaller than 22. So what it's going to do is instead of going from the beginning to the end of the array, it's going to create a little partition. So it's going to be only looking at values 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and it's trying to find the value 22. So the next thing that it does is it starts in the middle of that section, sees, okay, the value is 20. So we have to be looking above our section again. Um, now it'll, it should round down. So then what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at the middle value of this, which actually is gonna end up being this one. It'll say, oh, I found what I was looking for, and then it's done. So pretty much what it does is it always looks for the middle value and then determines which side, the lower side or the upper side, uh, in terms of where it should find its next middle value. And you're gonna find that this works very quickly to find our actual number. So in addition to this stuff, um, we need a few extra things. Uh, we need a minimum, which is going to start at zero because uh, at the beginning, the left-hand edge of where we're searching is this first element zero here. Uh, and then we're gonna have our maximum, which is going to be the array length minus one. So at the beginning, it's going to be looking at every single element as a possible location for our number. Uh, and then what we're also going to need is we are going to need a middle value. Uh, ignore the fact that it's zero. I'm just initializing it to make the next part of the program uh, happier. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll set the counter to zero and then we're pretty much ready to go. I'll just create a little bit of extra space here. Okay, so again, uh, what I said was we always need to check the middle. 
If it doesn't find it, so imagine we were looking for the value 21, what, would it, what it would do would be, uh, it would check the middle, okay, it's not here. It would check the middle value, no, it's not here. It would check the middle value here, 21, and then realize uh, basically our middle, our minimum and maximum number would be the same number or sometimes they'll cross each other. So it essentially means that we have no space to look. So when it, whenever it does that, it realizes, oh, I have no numbers to look at. The number can't possibly be in this array. So uh, our loop is gonna look like this. So we'll do a while loop for this. And while the maximum minus the minimum is larger than zero. So the space between the maximum number and the minimum number actually has at least one value that it can look at. Um, if not, we take the maximum number minus the minimum number, either they're the same or they've crossed each other, which is a possibility. Uh, and then we're gonna determine, oh, there are zero actual numbers that we can check. Let's stop looping, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is every time we check, we're going to increase our counter, okay? So now, what is the first place that we want to look? The middle number is going to become equal to the maximum number plus the minimum number divided by 2, which is the midpoint. So it's kind of like uh, the average of the highest value and the lowest value that we could be looking at. Uh, sorry, the average of the highest position and the lowest position, not the values in those positions. Okay. So we found our midpoint. Now what are we gonna do? First, let's check to see if the midpoint, so if the number in the midpoint actually is the number that we're searching for, this is where we are going to system.out.println search for found in position mid because this will be the position that we just found uh, what we were searching for. Uh, and then let's say how many checks were performed. So system uh, dot out dot println counter plus uh, checks performed. I just get my spacing uh, consistent here uh, as I like to do. Okay, and not count, counter. Uh, and then we'll break out of the loop. There we go. So this will only cover the situations where uh, we find the value. Now, what if we're looking at a midpoint and it's not the value. So that's where we need an else uh, if. So if search for, if the number we're searching for is a bigger number than the number we're currently looking at at our midpoint, we know that we have to find, uh, I mean, the computer doesn't understand really like right or left, but if we're laying it out left to right, uh, if the number we're searching for is bigger than the, mid, the midpoint, then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move the entire port, part of what we're looking at higher. So the minimum is going to be equal to, now we could make it the midpoint, but we already know that the midpoint isn't the number that we're searching for. So we're going to make it mid plus one. So if we, uh, like for here, if we're checking this and we were looking for the number 22, then um, the minimum number is not gonna be zero anymore on the next check, it's gonna be seven. The maximum is not gonna change. So it's gonna go from zero to 11 to seven to 11. So the minimum will essentially become uh, one larger than the midpoint. 
Uh, otherwise, else if the search for is less than the array midpoint, then what we're going to do is we are going to shift the maximum number down. Not to the middle number because we know that the middle number isn't what we're looking for. It's to the left of it or smaller. So we're going to make that equal to uh, the maximum number for what we're checking on the next iteration of the loop is going to become the maximum number, um, sorry, the mid, mid number uh, minus one. And there, that's the entire algorithm uh, for the binary search. But we just have to put in a check in here for um, if it didn't find the number. So if uh, the mid number, like when we exit the loop, if whatever the, the middle number is after the loop is done is not the thing we were searching for, then what we need to do is we need to put system.out.println. Uh, we're going to say search for uh, not found. And uh, system.out.println. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm just going to copy paste. I realize that that's faster. We're going to just say how many checks performed. Okay. So now let's get kind of a kind of a sense for how efficient this is. So remember in our example, we're not checking uh, 12 values. We're going to be checking 100 values. And before you run the program, make a prediction uh, for like what you think the average uh, amount of times it's going to take to determine if the number is either in or not in the, uh, in the array. So I'm going to run this. Um, so it says 51, I got to put some spacing in here. Uh, 51 is found in position 34. Six checks performed. So remember in the linear example, what it would have to do is it would have to check every position. So if it found something in position 34, it would take 35 checks to do this. Instead, it does six. So let me uh, just space this out here uh, so that I am happier. There we go. And let's look at some other examples. Uh, 138 is found in position 87. So remember that this would have taken 88 checks to find it. This actually finds it in three checks. Uh, this is so efficient compared to, oh, and when it's not found, it still only takes six checks in this case. Um, when, you know, by comparison to the linear search, this is just crazy fast. Uh, so when you're trying to make an efficient program to find a value um, and you know that it's a sorted array, it's very important. You cannot do a binary search if the array is not in sorted order. So if it is sorted, uh, it is way, way faster. Uh, to do a binary search than a linear search. So you should be using this uh, over and over again whenever you need to search for a value. Just determine, you know what, um, like how valuable it is to make sure that your data is uh, sorted uh, before you decide if you're going to use a uh, binary search or not.